It's time for Small Town Times. Welcome to Small Town Times. Uh, today I have Ed Valenti of the Dion Quince, and you have a, a lot of exciting things coming up, so let's get right into it. What's planned for uh, May? Well, uh, welcome and good afternoon. Thanks, Dave, for inviting me here, and I'm glad to uh, give an update on what's going on with the uh, Quince Museum and our Dion Quince Heritage Board. Mm -hmm. So uh, coming up, uh, the first event that we've got coming up is May 28th on the Sunday. We have a net coming to North Bay. She will be her 89th birthday, the Quince 89th birthday. So we're uh, planning an event uh, as we speak and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, we expect uh, a good crowd. That's one of the big concerns, actually big concerns we have because the last time we had an event on uh, August of 2018, there was over a thousand people came. So we're trying to uh, uh, determine uh, how big of a turnout we'll have, and that's uh, certainly something we're working on. And then the following week after that, uh, Jerry Mendocino's play, uh, Five of the Dion's, a Quince musical, which is its uh, follow-up to the successful first try in uh, 2022. And uh, that's another, uh, you know, he's added some additional material and enhanced the uh, play itself and looking forward to that as well. So it's uh, those are the two events back to back with us. Uh, we'll keep us busy for the next little while. Oh, just organize and getting ready. And I think his is on the Friday, Saturday at the Capitol Center. That's correct. Yeah, June so 2nd, June 3rd. Yeah. And so that should be a big, big week here. Um, you know, like it's not often. And even like the 2018 event, uh, that was like, Huge because it doesn't happen very often. Right? No, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the uh, second version of the musical. I uh, had a great uh, interview with Jerry uh, to announce that one last year, and this year I got to talk to him for a little bit. Yeah, and uh, he was explaining that uh, they, they wanted to add in that um, the uh, the aspect of the uh, the other. Dion family. Of the Dion family, right? And the siblings in there. And that's one thing that we've been uh, focusing a little more on in respect to the museum itself is giving it a bigger, broader picture, you know, uh, because not just the Quince that, uh, you know, went through the, the situation with, uh, you know, basically living in a zoo. Uh, not, uh, the uh, family itself uh, was kind of shut out from all that. And uh, certainly the mom and dad not not being able to raise their uh, five girls uh, until they were nine years old. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of uh, sad aspects to that uh, media circus, tourism yeah. circus that was created there. Uh, I know Brian Callahan, and he does a great tour of the museum, and he explains yes. the good, the bad, and the ugly of it all. And yes, he's a relative, he, right? Yes, and he's the uh, nephew of the Quince, and certainly his mom, Trez, who passed away just around the COVID start, uh, or a little after COVID uh, began, and uh, she was the last sibling that's of 14 kids that were born to uh, Mrs. Dion. There's only two that still survive, and that's Annette and Cecile in uh, Montreal area, the two right. Quince. Now, um, I know my uh, magazine sales guy and a volunteer <laughs> at the Quince there, Mike uh, uh, Jelinas, he's a part of this uh, organization, right? Eh? Yes, he came on as uh, on the board of directors, and he's been a great help to it. He's, you know, Mike's got some uh, great uh, connections that really help when we uh, need some help uh, for the Quince, uh, for the board, and that. Uh, and he's been working really hard on uh, so helping to defray our costs for this uh, upcoming uh, birthday event. Now. Um I was uh, watching the council presentation where you were requesting some uh, some operating support from the city council and you were turned down. Uh, how's that? I know that that caused a bit of a, uh, you know, uh, an upset there. I saw Brian's post. Yes, uh, and, and it's been difficult for our board. Um, certainly um, some of the other groups that were we were uh, grouped in, like uh, put together with, um, you know, they, they, they do some very uh, important things. Uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, the difference with us is that we manage an actual city-owned uh, um, entity, the museum, mm -hmm. just like North Bay Museum. And, uh, and when uh, one of the things that was, has been discussed is we had said we're not going to, or we were, uh, it's been indicated that we were not going to ask for operational funds. Um, I uh, actually went and looked back at some old YouTube when I made my presentation, and I say it specifically there at that time. Yeah, that was, was in 2017. We asked, we did ask for 35,000 in operating to start up. That was denied. 
that was just for a startup operational. Um, and then in 2018, uh, we did ask for uh, 15000 from the uh, landscaping budget. There was a $30,000 as part of the subcommittee report mm-hmm. uh, when the city agreed to move it to its new location. And uh, when we uh, made that request for the 15000 in 2018, I did say at this time, we're not looking for operational funds. So we knew we had to get some kind of, uh, you know, rapport and be able to show that we were, you know, we were prove operating, yourself. you know, proof, you know, just prove that we were a legitimate uh, entity and we were, you know, we were expanding on the ability of the museum itself. And it has been going that way uh, with a number of different events. And, and you guys just achieved uh, charitable status as well, we just, which is going to help. Yeah. So in October of uh, 2022, we uh, finally uh, were awarded uh, charitable status. And that will really help. And so any kind of events, you know, we can do in-kind events. People would like to uh, donate, uh, you know, like say, for example, with an upcoming uh, hotel space, we can give in-kind uh, charitable receipts for that. Well, maybe so, somebody uh, donates 100 magazines that can get a receipt this yes, time, is that what you're yeah. saying? <laughs> we, uh, you know. That'd be great. And we're going to do that. And actually, I have... Uh, um, magazines to help uh, with any donations that yeah. come to you. Uh, we'll have a magazines uh, uh, for anybody that donates. Yeah. So and that's one of the things about donations. Ever since we put out about the that we didn't get the five thousand from the city, uh, we've had uh, one American uh, who's come up before uh, this, this, uh, sent a two hundred dollar U.S. check. So those are the kind of little things: a hundred dollars here, two hundred dollars there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have someone who um, from Camp Conawaga is supplying us with a twenty by thirty tent, which uh, you know right away that saves us a thousand dollars or more. Uh, oh so, yeah. These these are all the little uh, little benefits from having that community support coming through, you know. And the, one of the big reasons why we wanted the city the five thousand, we didn't want to be too crazy on it. We knew that there were there was a lot of uh, push and pull to you know to uh, to sponsor some of these other uh, community groups. Um, we you know, and when I say community groups, we don't really look at ourselves as a community group in that same uh, you know uh, same way of framing it uh we we see ourselves as what the north bay museum is and they get over they get one hundred ten thousand dollars every year so we're not looking for that kind of uh um, support we just want to have the ability to do some more marketing right now we have very little marketing because we don't have a budget for it Mm -hmm. Uh, and when we market the museum and, and i've said this at council is when we go out and market the museum one of the things that is special about the Dion Quince Museum is that I can we could market this in the states. Not that we would necessarily do that, but we could market in the states, and people will recognize the Dion Quince Museum. Oh yeah! So you will we'll get some people who maybe have come up to Ontario, or whatever, who may take the run up. We've had lots of people who've popped in who never would have come to North Bay, and yeah. so that's where we think we're we have an especially good draw is getting some people into North Bay. And then, you know, we've had uh, in the past, uh, they've come, spent a few nights here and then taken in the chief command and all, all those uh, other amenities we have. And so we're part of a team is the way we look at it. We're with the North Bay Museum. you got the splash pad. There's a the recent announcement for more uh, activities in the, on the grounds there. Uh, we have the basketball court. There's going to be the uh, skate park. So I, I think as you do an incremental uh, approach to uh, expanding the waterfront, I think that's it's a lot more efficient way of doing it and a lot cheaper for the city uh, to process that as opposed to having one grand plan, which I, I know they have been working on, but I, I think you can always do it in incremental stages. I'm big on incremental achievables, man. Pardon? I'm big on incrementable, uh, incrementable uh, achievables. Yes. Might not be able to say it properly, but... Uh, uh, do things in stages, make some progress, yeah. make some progress. A lot of times when you sit back and try to make too big of a plan, um, it's, uh, you're losing opportunity. Well, you know, you look at some of the other groups like uh, Heritage Gardens, for example. Um, I think that was around, they, they were getting subsidized something like seventy five or $80,000. i am not sure the exact number. But that would cost the city a lot more money if they had to go and tender that process out. And it's the same with if you had to run the museum. Now, they may not want to be in that tourism business, but the city is a tourist town. I mean, uh, I think we... Of course they're in the tourism business. 
if we deviate. every try every time they try not to be in the tourism business, yeah. they talk about tourism they development. Talk about yeah. Tourism. Yeah. We can't deviate. I mean, it, and it's not just you know it's we have our sports tourism. You know, it's certainly a big draw because of our location and all that, but also our cultural you know uh, history that's that's here and uh, you know the two museums together. And there's the Canadian Forces uh, Museum as well, along with Heritage Gardeners, the train and all that. There's a lot of little things around that, uh, the waterfront area that certainly would attract people to come here and hang out and have some fun. Yeah. Now, I know the uh, the budget seemed to be tight in their decisions. They did allocate a little bit of money uh, for a couple little groups. Uh, what are you going to... Uh, do going forward and as far as a, a rejigged ask for the city? So we've had, you know, like I say, the board has been pretty upset that, you know, we felt uh, we've been working pretty hard. And, uh, you know, in, in some cases, I would say last year, we just our board of directors itself probably put in more than that $5,000 worth that we're asking for the city. And I've always said with volunteers, I just want their time. I don't want, you know, it's not about the money coming from volunteers because time is the big thing. And uh, so, you know, after this, we've had the meeting and we said we're going to ask for continual operational funding in 2024. Uh, we haven't determined the amount. It's going to be more than what we asked at this uh, for the 5000 But uh, that will be funds that will go towards marketing um, and towards improvements around there. And that was one of the things that, you know, when we say operational funds, coming from the city most of our operational funds are spent have been spent on landscaping or things around improving the museum itself it's not a case of uh we do have uh we do carry insurance as required by the city uh and a number of other things that we might have expenses for but it's that's very uh small part of our budget our biggest budget is landscaping and in that uh budget which we call an operational budget there was nine thousand dollars in benches and other uh, plaques and display cases that we want to put outside. And uh, as we improve the grounds, it, it makes it more attractive for people to come in. So that's why, you know. You just think that you guys are worth it. Yeah, we, we do feel that we're worth something out of there. We, I, we do feel we're bringing something to the city, and it's a small investment by the city. And to this date, the city has contributed, uh, you know, outside of the move, which – you know, that was the other thing that comes up and says, well, the move went over budget, but I don't know what happened uh, with the move, but uh, it was supposed to be tendered in June and never got done till late November. Um, so that was out of our hands. We don't know why that was delayed. Somewhere along the line, it got delayed, unfortunately, and it cost the city a lot more money. Um, so I, I don't think that should be kind of uh, laid, laid on yeah. our lap. That yeah. that was an issue. That was the city's uh issue in, in the delay. And uh, when it comes to um, what the city contributed so far, 15,000, we've spent, uh, you know, uh, I've had uh, a number of businesses. We've had uh, design roofing. My brother, my brother actually uh, has kicked in a lot. He had his companies, which his sons are, have taken over, but design roofing. When we brought the home there, it was a, a block foundation and uh, that we put it on top of, which was about three to four feet high. And we had them insulate it and wrap it with uh, their metal siding and all that. That you know, uh, I don't know what that would have cost, but certainly that. And then also they did the work on the accessible entrance. We did the uh, the ramp getting up there and a number of other things. We had Wavy Fisher Wavy, you know, contribute the concrete. You know, I I would say comfortably that we spent well over a hundred thousand in terms of in-kind services uh, that were done there. You got to, you got to also remember. Big investment, a you know, community you know, we, investment yeah, too. And it's a, a community investment and, and it cost the city 15,000 so far. Now they are contributing another 15,000 for, to improve the HVAC system. But that's, that's kind of a system that really is, we're, we're taking care of it so that the city, the billing will last longer and it will reduce the cost of the city. Oh yeah, smart investment. You know. um, I remember writing about it back when it was being uh, debated in the, Basically, my opinion was uh, either torture it or do something with it. Yeah. Could, could fool around and wa watching it just f fall apart and not take care of it well. Yeah. And, you know, um, I know that the Chamber of Commerce was given the duty to, you know, to take care of it up until that point, but I don't really think that's in their, you know, that's not their forte. That's not something they should be dealing with. They should have been, the city could have reached out and got a group to handle this. But nevertheless, I think at the end there, there was a, you know, obviously there, 
there's a bit of lost interest in it. And uh, when it got moved, I think that's when it uh, reinvigorated everything, especially with the... Well, now uh, it has, has a real value. It's in a real place and it's yeah. uh, getting some return. There was just a documentary crew here from France, yeah, right? there was a French documentary. And they're going to have... Uh, that's going to be broadcast in France and Germany, I think it is, and then subtitles in other countries. Uh, so that was really neat. There was, you know, at the time, if you were to call around the 2018, there was two books getting uh, mm -hmm. uh, produced. They, they they came to fruition. And, you know, oh, just, Jerry's got that musical. It's yeah, getting headlines. Jerry's getting, yeah, it's getting headlines. And it's getting headlines. Yeah. And he hopes if we can be successful enough that he might want to take this on the road. So yeah. uh, who knows how uh, things expand, but it's getting us more and more coverage. And we do. And, you know, it's funny because... There is a silver lining to when the city said no to us because it's the same thing when the city said no. Yeah, put they're some gas send, into they send the whole right. It just kind of inflamed the whole situation. And I know certainly it upset our board, but I always look at it as, you know, it was, it's been good publicity because we've, we're getting emails on a regular basis now. Yeah. People, how can I help you out? I just yeah. read about how the city's turned you down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, and in respect to that whole thing, when the city turns us down, it's difficult to go to the provincial and federal uh, governments and say, listen, we need your help. Well, then they ask, well, is the city helping out? Because we're reading that they're turning you down. Yeah. So, you know, it would have been a small investment that we could, you know, parlay into maybe a, a, a little more ex extensive provincial and federal funding. Well, let me ask you this, and it's great having you here for my second interview in the, uh, the new uh, Clark Marketing Communication <laughs> Studio here because you're another former counselor. You have some experience there. Yes. And uh, you have a decent enough uh, political relationship, I believe, with Peter Chirico. The yeah, mayor. I've known Peter for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So you have experience on council. You, you know Peter. Um, how come you guys couldn't figure out how to lobby to get that uh, yeah. okay? Like what, what fell apart there? Uh, you know, it's hard to say. It, it depends on, I know it was a bit um, at the beginning when they had the friends group. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think maybe there was uh, some difficulties that were developed from that because it, it was a hardcore press uh, because it, what we were we were like, uh, I believe it is a motion for reconsideration away from uh, losing the home. Hmm. And when it came back, uh, the pressure was just, it was going all across the, I, I, I know I had people uh, who live in Vancouver who reached out and says, yeah, I saw you on TV, Ed, you know, talking about the Quince Museum staying, you know. And so it was, it you know, definitely you, 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 you know, you, you might uh, create some animosities. Uh, and I think we're just trying to, you know. Uh, Live down that bad, bad yeah, blood. Yeah, we're, we're trying to bring that down and yeah. we, we, we want to smooth things out. We think this is a great museum, but. It's difficulty. It feels like we've got hurdles that we keep having to go over. Yeah. Um, you know, keep when proving yourself for yeah, some reason, keep proving herself, you know, when we had, we had some difficulty, you know, when I bring up about my brother, uh, when we went to, uh, when we got $20,000 from the Ontario government, we, uh, we had, we're trying to, one of the conditions of that is you have to do the job, pay the bills, and then you get reimbursed. And it's guaranteed once you do the work, they said. Yeah. So this is, see if the city will help. So we eventually did reach out to the city. We were talking about just getting a $20,000 loan. It would be 45, 60 days. And after about three or four months, it was turned down. We didn't, we never heard the reason why. And, and that's the things we're trying to change that kind of uh, perspective that, you know, maybe uh, I, we feel sometimes that we're not uh, worthy sometimes of, of, having that museum there. And I think that we're, our objective is to try and to improve the image mm -hmm. uh, of us. But when that situation came, I remember um, I'm at Casey's with my brother, Frank. And uh, I said, you know, I says, I, I can't believe, it. I don't know why the city won't loan us, loan us 20 grand. It'll be back in their pockets soon enough, you know, within 45 days. And uh, yeah, he says, well, how much do you need? And I said, 20 grand. He says, done, I got it for you. And so he loaned us $20,000. And less than 45 days, we had them paid back. Yeah. And I think that's what we're trying to, I think maybe, you know, maybe I, I need to do a better job of convincing the city that the museum is a, a real legitimate tourist attraction in this mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. And I think partly part of it is, is uh, a lot of people don't understand what was, what the museum or what the births did to our area. I mean, it's one of the major reasons why North Bay uh, you know, accelerated in its growth. 
I have an idea about that, and, and, and I think it has something to do with um, some people believe it's just continued... Um, exploitation? Exploitation, yeah, and that the... Uh, Anything to do with it, even even though Jerry's uh, like musical yeah. was, uh, 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 Brian thought it was did a good job of showing both sides, you, yeah. Yeah. and and how the family was bubbled on, on where the quintuplets, but the other side of the family in this particular musical would be just, you know, their feelings will be shown, and then none of that full story would be there if everybody just closed the book and said, shit, uh, shoot, yeah. we shouldn't have done that. Which you know it was they were definitely taken advantage of and 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 uh, suffered uh, for that and paid price and uh, but um, the fact is that that's the history and that's what's here and you have it so yeah. it should be so I, I think sometimes people equate with what the Ontario government did and exploiting them you know taking them away at, at four months of age you know yeah. and then made a lot of money uh, it was well it was number one tourist attraction yep. uh, over Niagara Falls uh, for at least one year and possibly two and then uh, the dolls were uh, bigger than Shirley Temple dolls so there was the draw um, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of funds I mean you got three million people come here and everybody came up here uh, Kellogg the founder of Kellogg's uh, he drove all the way up he said it would call it the eighth wonder uh, Amelia Earhart was here so there was there was like movie stars here there was you know Dr. Defoe was a big celebrity at that time. And so everybody was gaining off of this. And one of the things we had said when we started up is that we're not going to gain from anything like this. So our uh, admission to the museum itself is free. And that was one of the things we felt strongly about. Mm -hmm. And people donate, so it, it still they still help us out uh, when they come to the museum. You don't have to donate, but some people do. Yeah. Uh, especially when they hear Brian's uh, story, because... There are some people who come out of there and they're, you know, they're teary-eyed. Uh, they didn't realize what the story is. And that was one of the things about the play mm -hmm. that we had a lot of comments from people. I didn't know that this kind of stuff was going on. They heard, out, you know, they heard a generalized uh, uh, version of the story, but yeah. not really when you get down into the, the weeds and all that and see how it affected the family, the parents. I, I can only imagine a mother who's told that she can only see her kids for 20 minutes a day, if that, not every day. I and think the, the proof's in the pudding with yeah. the, and, and that actually coming here for her 89th birthday and uh, yes. and seeing the, the good work that's been done and, and uh, you guys organized and well supporting yeah. it. And uh, I, I you She know. doesn't want to be forgotten yeah. uh, because of what they went through. Yeah. Uh, and then certainly there's- to Forget the, them now would yeah. be a discourtesy. Yes. It'd be a crime. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's the same thing with the Dion family. And then that's one thing we've really been happy with Brian is he's bringing that, expanding that story. So people get to hear their side of the uh, story. And uh, I know Brian's mom was always, uh, Brian has always said that uh, she would not uh, approve of uh, maybe Brian being part of the, uh, part of the Dion Quince Heritage Board. But, you know, at some point in time, you have to, you know, you have to kind of, you have to have uh, an olive branch there and you have to kind of try and mend the fences. And I think that's what Brian's been trying to do. Uh, or at least, you know, show that their side of the story so people understand it. And people love it. I mean, and well, that was, you know, think... it's funny when uh, the minister came through when they gave us the $20,000 grant. When she walked in, she was coming to do a presentation um, and she wanted to come and visit the museum. So we brought her over there after she came out with Brian. And I remember standing in front and she goes, what are you doing in front here? And we just had gravel. We had the shape of the walkway and the center location. I says, well, we're looking to uh, put a walkway in here. We figured it might be 20, 20, 25,000, somewhere around there. She says, what do you need? And I says, we need 20 grand. She says, okay. And by the time they got, walked over to the uh, North Bay Museum, it was not far away. Uh, they had approval. Uh, they had indicated approval. Hmm. And so they, 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 uh, they asked us to come over. We didn't know what was going on. And then while we're there, that's when they announced that they've added $20,000 uh, oh. in funding. And it was a really nice surprise. Mm. Um, and certainly I think we'd like to see maybe that on a local level, uh, that kind of uh, enthusiasm as well. Yeah. Well, maybe it'll come. <laughs> I know Callahan uh, is a, uh, got, uh, he's a, of good character because he's a fellow Steelers fan. Oh yes, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> Even the dog's called Steeler. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Now, so, uh, tell me a little bit about the difference in the and maybe the friction between uh, 
the your museum and the calendar museum, which kind of has a very strong component for the Quints and Dr. Defoe and whatnot too. Well, we were, we were, so a lot of that came about, uh, there was some, you know, uh, anxiety when uh, there was artifacts that were loaned to the museum, the Quince Museum. Uh, that would have been the hockey sweaters, which Toronto Maple Leafs, Montreal, Boston, mm-hmm. Chicago. I can't remember the other ones, but uh, Detroit. Anyways, the uh, those items in their basket were had been loaned to uh, the museum. And then when, when they came to, you know, uh, 30 years later, they end up paying for it. Uh, the museum, or sorry, the uh, um, the Chamber of Commerce. And after uh, paying a few thousand dollars for it, it came into their inventory. And so when they had to close up, when they were moving from that location, they needed to close up all their inventory. And so we had hoped, we had thought they were going to be, that would be going back to the North Bay Museum. And that was the wish of the owner of the, well, the granddaughter, daughter and granddaughter had indicated mm-hmm. that they wanted to stay with the museum. And so they gave this, this is when things were up in the air about the uh, Quince Museum, but we did get approval at that time and they could have stayed with our museum. And so that really, so when it got to, you know, the uh, uh, Defoe Museum, they were, we thought those items should have stayed with our museum. So that created a bit of tension and there, there's some pretty valuable items there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were, we had hoped that, you know, the chamber would have reconsidered. I was on the chamber at that time. Um but uh, that didn't come to fruition. And uh, so, and then, you know, maybe just sometimes uh, we're not big Defoe fans. As as you get to read more and more stuff about Dr. Defoe, uh, right, it, right. It, you know, uh, it, it, certainly we've seen letters and stuff like that that you wouldn't, wouldn't, want, to, wouldn't want to read because he would have been... Uh, he would, oops. Oh, that, that turned off. Sorry. No problem. My apologies. It's okay. Um Anyway, so we uh, uh, we're, we're you know I'm, we're going to work on improving that relationship. But like I say, I think the Doctor Defoe, um, uh, especially with the Dion family, the Doctor Defoe was not someone they re- had liked at all, right? Um, because they felt he was the lead mm-hmm. in taking the kids away. Yeah. Well, so yeah, so a little so bit there's, of there's natural that tension, little, a little bit of yeah, bad a little bit blood, of tension. Yeah, but yeah. you know, we're hoping over time we can uh, oh, heal, yeah. heal all wounds. Time heals everything, yeah. right? Right on. Um, like I said, you're a former uh, counselor. Uh, you ran. You didn't uh, um, didn't make it this time. And uh, yeah, I was a little preoccupied. I uh, had some health issues. So well, t- I, I noticed that uh, you lost some weight, and you were telling me about it. You you mind sharing? Yeah, I. Uh, so when. When uh, I knew something was going on with my health, I ended up getting a triple bypass. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. About, uh, it's been two two months now. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm feeling really good. Um, it was, uh, so it was pretty serious at the time. And so I never actually even walked around to do any campaigning. I really, I, I pulled back from a lot. I, well, I, I couldn't, uh, I'd walk, you know, 50 feet and I'd be tired. So, you know, I had to take care of my health and, and, and then, you know, when I looked at it after, I said, you know, thank God, maybe I didn't get in because, uh, but that doesn't mean next time, you know. Uh, you lost some weight too. Eh? You know, and I lost about 35 pounds. So wow. I was just, uh, you know, I, ha- I had to, you know, I had to focus on my health and uh, I've just got a 11 month old grandchild. So I want to be around for uh, that one and others to uh, get older and be teenagers and all that. So. It's, uh, and I don't regret that, you know, I, I, I certainly learned a lot from being on council cause you get to see the inner mm-hmm. workings. Um, I, I do think that we need to focus more on tourism and not because of I'm involved with the Quince Museum. Uh, sometimes I, I did feel maybe I had a conflict, but when I looked at it and I know we have Chris Main on there, I don't feel it's a conflict and uh, I would, you know, um, I think, uh, you know, with with the museum itself, it, it's it's a, it's a good uh, it's a good part of the cities and it's a good part of our tourism. And I think we need to really bo- we need we need to put some more effort into our tourism. I know we have our tourism North Bay, but the city itself, uh, I think, could uh, pick up the pace a little bit too. Yeah, well, I I know that that was important, and I don't think uh, 
You uh, being on the Dion Quince Museum board is a conflict for councillor duties. I think it's actually yeah. a plus and a bonus. Yeah, it's not like it's your business. You're fighting and, and for you're a city-owned entity. Yeah, you're you you're know. actually doing the the good work. So I wouldn't call that a conflict. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, sometimes that was. I think. I think in in certain cases, that no, was, your real that, estate that was sometimes might be more of a conflict. Yeah, real estate was. Well, definitely more of a conflict when it came to council than it was anything to do with the Quince Museum. Yeah. And so. how did you navigate that in case anybody, uh, that must have been tough. Yeah. So I, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, uh, um, I remember I'm on count, I'm at the council meeting and there's a file coming up and I, the num the address looks familiar, but the number doesn't, it's another numbered company. So I'm texting my cousin. Mm. I say, are you guys, uh, connected with this company? And I get a text back about five minutes, uh, less than five minutes later, a couple minutes later. And uh, she had, my cousin had said that, yes, that's our company we just started not long ago and uh, it's it's going to run uh, a subdivision. So right away I put my hand up and says, excuse me, I have to declare a conflict. I just found out this. That That's one of the things I, I always felt with council was when you get a numbered company putting forward I need to know some of the the people behind it. And I know maybe that's confidential, but you're coming forward to. Present. I don't think any you're presenting uh, something. I don't think it should be confidential. Should, no, any company dealing with the city needs to be identified. We need to yeah. know who owns that company. And that was the difficult that I found there was okay. Who is the? Who are these companies that are doing yeah. this? You know, and uh, it was always. I know George would always declare a conflict. George Marusas would always declare a conflict with uh, Kenelex because of a family member there even when they didn't win the uh, bidding. And uh, I took a little different tack there. I, If they were the winning bid, then I would declare a conflict. If they weren't, I voted. And I used, you know, I was always pretty supportive. I wasn't against anything. There were a couple of things that uh, I felt were getting a little too intensive on some of our uh, properties, like uh, the one at the school there uh, on, uh, I'm trying to remember the street off of John there. Yeah. Um, and uh, that the was Mac one the McDougal School, the McDougal School, yeah, yeah. which has been sold by uh, DSAP. Yeah, um, so not all the property though. I think they no, sold no, they were, yeah. they, but they sold a, a chunk of that. And uh, you know, I've always felt uh, one of the things when it came in with dealing with the city is the city just as the actually the first month of pandemic, the Ontario government re, uh, released a new report on intensifying within cities. Well. The pandemic shows up and people don't want to intensify. They want to spread out. And I said, maybe we need to re, you know. Well, people with re, money can we spread need out, to re, but we need they to need re, apartment buildings. Yeah, no, no, you still need apartment buildings. But there's certain areas. I've always found that a really uh, crazy uh, part of the city when it comes to traffic. There's a lot of traffic coming there. Yeah. And I always felt that, you know, we need to, we, we can't expand it anymore. I mean. Uh, I can think of some other sites that might be better, but you well, know. Franklin's a mess of, as an artery to get out of that part of the city. It, it's a difficult, yeah. you know. So, hmm. anyways, that was just my thoughts on that one. About the number company thing, is there any real reason why the can, uh, council can't have a firm policy that it, when we're dealing with making planning decisions, that uh, a numbered company has to be uh, identified to who owns it? Yeah, so that, that, I guess that's a tricky, uh, but I, I do believe that there should be, it should be a representative. Okay, who is the representative of that company? That should be identifiable. So, Definitely that. You, yeah. know, uh, you know, I don't need to know all the directors in a company, but I, I think, uh, you know, maybe, maybe. I want to know if somebody living here in North Bay owns that company and yeah. what other companies they own. Other companies, we we so. shouldn't be able to. Uh, I do feel we have to have more transparency. Yeah. Uh, I know that's a, that's a big topic uh, that the city needs to be more transparent. And I, I don't think it's that the city doesn't, I think it's. The companies need to be more transparent. The companies need, the to, cities be need to make them that it's way. It's the way we approach yeah. some of this. I yeah. think that's where the transparency issues are. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up in a bit. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I just, uh, thanks for giving us the, the chance. Uh, and hopefully I know one of the things, actually, we just got an email and someone saying, well, how can I donate? You know, so we do have GoFundMe, but people can send us money, uh, by uh, email, like a e -transfer? electronic transfer, e-transfer. Yep. And, and what's the uh, uh, email then, address to use for that? So use quinceboard, all one word at gmail.com. So oh yeah, that's Quince easy. Board at gmail.com. And it will automatically deposit. Now, if you do send us, if people do send us money, 
they should make sure and if they want a charitable receipt it's got to be at least a hundred dollars because it becomes a little too wieldy if we we don't yeah i was going to donate 70 but i decided yeah. not to. so uh we will issue a receipt but we need addresses and all that kind of stuff so uh certainly we're we're going to work on that mm -hmm. uh on cleaning that up a little bit so people have a little easier time with that but I, i'm just quite surprised and uh, we got a lot of americans coming up for this thing yeah because i think they realize at 89, you know, when is that ever going to come back again? And maybe their last visit. Yeah. We don't know that. Yeah. No, it's going to be a big one. So yeah. it's going to be a big year for you. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So, and looking we're always looking, like I say, if uh, some of the uh, companies want to help sponsor, not just the uh, the event, the birthday event, but the musical itself, there's charitable receipts that uh, come along with that if, uh, if that's a requirement. So at the t at tail end of this video, I'm going to put uh, Jerry Mendocino describing the, the new uh, second version of the uh, musical coming, as well as uh, the people involved. So that's right on. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for your time, Ed. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for coming out. Hey, Jerry, Dave Dale. Dave, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad, man. So Excellent. You're coming back to North Bay with another uh, musical. I am. An extended version of last year's show. Oh, cool. I added about uh, 15, 20 minutes, and we're uh, including some of the siblings. In fact, uh, uh, Brian Callahan's mother, Teresa, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the other... Uh, brothers who was born before the Quince. So we're going to get kind of like uh, the sibling's point of view as well. Oh, cool. And we're adding a few more uh, people uh, in the show. You know, the first uh, photographer and the first newspaper man that were able, was able to uh, uh, just look at the daily routine of the quintuplets at the hospital in fact uh i don't know you might you know the history you might be aware of some of these uh characters yeah uh, I... william dum uh, dumsday who was reporter for the nugget he was the first photographer and richard railton was the first uh uh, Richard Relton was the first photographer and Dunsby was the first reporter that uh, was uh, that took pictures and uh, followed the routine of the Dion's. Oh, cool. So, yeah, so we've added a few more characters and some uh, added stories and some uh, some more songs. Now, I remember talking to Brian there one time and from what I can remember, his mom and the, the other siblings were kind of kept separate and felt like they're separated really you know well uh they had five they had five people uh five kids before the dion's uh, and she was only 25 when she had the dion so there's she had five before mm. and therese who was brian's mother was five years old and they all had to live uh outside the house with their cousins for a year Wow. Uh, so they weren't able to see uh, the siblings at all. And, uh, you know, they did not get along. They did not uh, appreciate, uh, you know, that the Quince got all the attention. and uh, Kind of split the family almost. Oh, it, it, it really did. Wow. It split them up. Uh, and, uh, you know, everything that uh, is said, it's still... The kids that, I mean, Therese is 12 years old when she tells us, uh, you know, she says, you don't know me. I'm the older sister. I was five years old. Not a quint, so it doesn't matter. But I am still a Dion. Those babies almost killed our mother. She was almost dead when the last one came out. And after they were born, my mom got too fat. They were born in our house and we had to get out. For a year, I was sent to my aunt and the other four to Uncle Leon. We didn't even see them. When they were born, they ruined our family. My youth ended because there was so much suffering. Their birth wasn't a miracle, it was a tragedy. 
Wow. Which is, yeah, which is uh, how the the family looked at it. Uh, it was a tragedy. Five is number. In fact, I think one of, uh, it might have been Teresa's, uh, one of her sons was playing hockey, and he was number five. And she would not go and see him because he was number five. Hmm. The mother would not see the son play hockey because he had a number five jersey. And, and, and five was like the worst number in the world for the Dion's. Wow. So, I mean, yeah, it's, so it's continuing really, with your, uh, like the first version wasn't unglossed either, right? So No, no, I'm, uh, you know, just telling it like it was. Wow. 